Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're going to be doing this really fun ombre striped tumbler. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today down in the description below so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more vlogs, tips, tutorials, all kinds of stuff I have coming your way. And let's wake up, prep those tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. We're starting out with a tumbler that I've already prepped and primed and all that fun stuff. Now this is a big guy. This is a 30 ounce skinny and I purchased that through the Stainless Depot company. But of course you can use any tumbler you already have on hand. I'm going to be spray painting it with this fluorescent orange from Krylon. I'm also going to be using a fluorescent pink as well. Now the reason why I spray painted my tumbler white first is so that way these fluorescent colors really pop and shine on those tumblers. So I'm going to go ahead and prime up my cans really good because you want to make sure they're nice and primed. These, fluores these fluorescents, there we go, you have to shake a lot beforehand. It t it t sometimes it takes about a minute before that ball starts rolling around on the inside. So make sure you shake it really good till you hear that ball. Then give it a nice prime where you press that trigger a couple times just to make sure it's working. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start on our stripes here. Now, because these tumblers are so tall, they're about nine and a half inches tall, I have plenty of room to make these really big, exaggerated stripes along the side of my tumbler here. So if you're using something a bit smaller, you obviously won't be able to get as large of stripes on your tumbler. So just make sure that you kind of gauge how big you want them and make sure that they're all going to fit in there kind of equally. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the orange. And you are gonna notice, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white gap in between the orange and pink as I go up. I am doing that because I'm adding a little bit of fine yellow in between the pink, the chunky pink and orange that I'll be using, just to kind of give it a little bit more depth and character. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that white just so that, that way that yellow kind of shines through just a little bit more. As you see, my bottom stripe is probably about two and a half inches high, and then my orange stripe and these extra stripes that are coming up here, I'm gonna make about three inches wide. But again, that's because this tumbler is extremely tall. So again, just gauge and make sure that your stripes are gonna be even when you spray paint them on. Now right here, I'm gonna go back up to where I first started because I let that paint dry a little bit before I wanted to add a little bit more of a second coat over it, just to kind of make it a little bit more even. You wanna let it dry just a little bit before you start piling on more colors or it could start to crack and have drips and you don't wanna do that. So you just wanna let it dry a little bit beforehand. But even, even if it does do that, it doesn't matter because you're gonna be putting glitter over top of it anyways. So it's all good. This is just our base to kind of help those glitter colors shine even more. Now we're going to let that sit outside and dry and we're going to move inside and start the fun stuff. All right we are back inside. The tumbler is nice and dry and now I'm going to show you guys the glitters that I'm going to be using. You guys can obviously use your favorite glitters you already have on hand but I'm just going to show you exactly what I use today. I'm going to be using Party Girl which is a chunky hot pink. I'm also going to be using Nemo which is another like a bright vibrant orange chunky orange color and i'm going to be using this fine cut called lemon and that's more of a translucent yellow color and these are all from my glitter shop socglitters.com now the next step we're going to do is we're going to take our epoxy and we're going to put it onto our tumbler i just did this one stripe across the front today i didn't do two stripes like i typically do with chunky glitter and i kind of wish i did because i had to do a lot of sanding because i didn't apply a lot of epoxy. So <laughs> I just did this one little stripe. I'm gonna make sure that I'm very careful up around my edges. I know I have a lot of questions. How do you keep your edges so clean? I'm just really careful around them. That, that's all you wanna do. Okay, after I have my epoxy all applied, you just don't want any dry spots when you go to put on your epoxy. You wanna make sure everything's nice and wet and ready for your glitter. So here I'm gonna take some Party Girl and I'm just going completely around that edge, making sure it just kind of falls just a little bit. Now, when I go to do these ones in the center, I'm gonna go completely around the middle. Then I'm gonna tilt my tumbler down and add more glitter and let it kind of fall 
by itself down and then tip it up and let it fall back a little bit onto itself so that way it gives it that ombre look. And I'm just trying to be mindful of the white stripe that I left there so that way when I add that yellow down, that yellow has room to kind of shift in there and kind of pop on its own. All right, now we're gonna move on to that orange. I'm gonna go ahead and stick my piece of paper off to the side here. And now we're going to take that orange right here and we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to make a stripe right around the center. Then we're going to tip it down so that way that some of that glitter kind of falls back onto the pink there. And then we're going to tip it up and make sure that we kind of get that nice fade going in the other direction as well. And then we're just going to repeat that process right up around the rim there. And another thing I want you guys to kind of notice is typically when we do ombres or fades, um, you want to hold your hand back when you go to do that, right? You, you want to, the further your hand back, your hand is away from the tumbler, the more of a fade you're going to get. But with this, you kind of want to pinch it just a little bit closer because we're doing stripes and you don't really want that glitter to cascade completely down your tumbler. You just want it to go a little bit up into each color. So that's a pretty big tip that I want you guys to remember as well. Just make sure you keep it a little bit closer so that way you have a bit more control over what you are doing. All right, now that the orange is done, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the yellow. And I'm pretty much just gonna take this yellow and do the same kind of concept. I'm gonna make a straight line right around each color, right in the center of each color there, and then just kind of let it fade up and down into the pink and the orange. Now, once I have this yellow all applied, I'm just gonna go let that hang dry probably for about three hours because I used my quick coat of epoxy. I think I forgot to mention that. I used a quick coat of epoxy. So in about three hours, we're gonna come back through and we're gonna add another coat of epoxy over top of our raw glitter. Okay, now we are ready to add a coat, a nice, thick coat of epoxy over top of our raw glitter here. It's already prepped and I forgot to come through because I used my quick coat epoxy that first round and kind of squished my glitters down. So that's why I kind of had an issue. So that <laughs> make sure you guys go through and remember to go back through and kind of squish your glitters down after you apply them because now I'll, I'll have to show you guys. I'm gonna be sanding it and stuff like that. So as you can see here, again, I'm just taking it really slow. I'm being very careful up around my rim and I'm just making sure that all those glitters are nice and coated. And as it's on my turn, I'm gonna go ahead and take my torch and hit it up really good because right here is where all the micro bubbles kind of come from that coating right over top of the raw glitter and anytime you apply uh epoxy right over any type of vinyls that are metallic or anything like that they always seem to have so many micro bubbles so just make sure that you hit it up really good with your torch and let it spin and cure overnight and now we are going to move on to the sanding process I'm gonna take a very sharp razor knife and I am going to trim up my rim first before I move on to my sink. Because I like to do a wet sanding in my sink, it just really helps out with any type of debris. It kind of washes it as I go. I just prefer to do it in the sink. So that's how I do it, but you guys can sand any which way you prefer. Now, because of the type of glitters that we used, you can be a little bit rougher with it. I mean, you don't want to paint down to the paint or anything like that, but you can definitely do your thing. Make sure you get all those lumps off. Put another coat, another thin coating of epoxy over top of this. Make sure you hit it up really good with your torch again. And then it is time to apply our decals. Now, if you plan on using any type of holographic or metallic glitters, I definitely would not sand it that way. I would apply another coat of epoxy over top of that before I do any type of sanding. Just so that way I don't run the chance of hurting the glitter underneath. Okay, now here are my decals. I just got some really nice vector type palm trees. I like more of a realistic palm tree and I also have some waves here that I'm gonna apply to my tumbler. I made these about three inches high. I just wanted to double check, that's why I pulled out my measuring tape. <laughs> I made these about three inches high. Um, some of them are a little bit shorter than the others, but that's okay. I just felt like it gave it a little bit more character in the end. There's no right or wrong when it comes to making art. Hey, you guys know I'm more of a kind of whimsy type person and I, I like to just kind of put my decals wherever I want to, but this one I wanted them a little bit more straighter and, and more, you know, in line with each other so that's why I did it this way this time um, I'm using my lid as my guide so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the back here and I'm just going to line that up right in the center of my lid because if you look at how my lid is it has these little branches off to the side and then the way the lid is on the on 
where it flips up, where you can drink out of it, you can definitely see where the line is that's the center. And if you flip it over into the back, it also has a little line where the seam is, where the lid kind of goes together. So I, I have, I actually have like four different ways to be able to see, you know, where they can all kind of line up all the way around for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my trees. I'm going to line those up all the way around my tumbler, just one right on top of each other. And if the process that I'm showing you guys here just makes you a little too nervous and you don't think you'll be able to do it just right, again, I don't want you to think it has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be just fine. Only you can see your own flaws, okay? But anyways, if you want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect, you can come through and use a dry erase marker and get your lines on there just right and make sure everything is lined up just right. But I'm okay with just kind of eyeballing where I want it to go and that's how I'm going to do it. Now, after I get my tree trees all lined up here. I'm going to do the kind of the same concept with my waves as well. The first thing I did was just kind of go right through the middle and I took my waves and I put one right in the center in between all the trees and I just continued that process all the way around. And then once the center was done I came through at the top and just kind of lined everything up Got it about where I wanted at the top of my tumbler and just made sure that I made every single one of those decals about the same space from the top as I went around. And then I'm going to move on to doing the bottom as well. And after those are all applied, I'm just going to take my hands and kind of warm up my vinyl to make sure everything's nice and stuck down. I'm going to go ahead and take it outside. I'm going to give it its last two finishing coats of epoxy and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.